Pisces, this is your astrology forecast for June 2015. I'm going to do it a little bit differently this month. I'm not going to draw a tarot card for you to give you an overall theme. I'm going to focus on the astrology exclusively and I'm going to look at um, the planets the way I usually do in terms of where they are located in your chart, what signs they occupy, how they're influencing you. But I'm going to focus a little bit more on some of the aspects so the relationships the planets make with each other and how that creates a much clearer overall picture for you in June, okay, and what's coming up. So it may take a little bit longer um, this month, so please, I hope you can join me for this report, but it will give you a more in-depth view. Now, the first thing that I notice about your chart here uh, in June is that Saturn is right on top of your midheaven and that your midheaven your transiting midheaven is right on top of your IC in your chart, okay? So it's almost like work has become family, family has become work, things are a little bit topsy-turvy, and you feel really nurtured and safe in work, and in, in your practical family life, you feel like you have to apply yourself a little bit more. So this is quite a heavy kind of time, heavy kind of energy, where, you know, this isn't like sitting on the beach sipping cocktails. You're, you're working, you're very comfortable at work, um, and your relationships seem a little bit dry at the beginning of the month. Now, the full moon occurs on the 2nd of June, and that happens in your 10th house in the sign of Sagittarius. Now, the full moon is always a time of light being sh shined onto a situation, and this is in your working sector, in Sagittarius. So, what this will do, it will open a door in terms of your working life. It will show you where the next step is, how you can create more structure in terms of your work, how you can create a working environment that's much more solid, more reliable, more predictable even, and I think part of your hard work has led up to this point. So you have been working really hard. That now kind of leads to something new. So it could be that people um, celebrate the successes or celebrate the hard work and new doors of opportunity open as a result of that. But definitely the new moon is going to be a time of blossoming in terms of your career around the second. Now the 6th of June sees Venus going into Leo in your sixth house. And Venus is the goddess of love, and Leo is the sign of being expressive, of being confident, of being warm-hearted, and really applying yourself to something with love. The sixth house is your daily routine in terms of work, and I think the new opportunities and the new structure that you've enjoyed in your working life now slot together, and you love and you're thrilled and over the moon with your job at the moment. I think this beginning of June will really offer you some fabulous opportunities that you've dreamt of, that you've hoped for, and you really see this sort of growth and expansion that you've been desiring. Um, Jupiter, the planet of good luck and good fortune, that's in an aspect with Mars, the planet of desire and war, and that's in a sextile aspect. A sextile is a really harmonious aspect. It's 60, the planets are 60 degrees away from each other. <coughs> Excuse me. And it means that Jupiter inflates and improves and kind of sprinkles its dust of good luck on your working life and connects with Mars in a kind of sense, the way you communicate. And it almost makes your work feel like you're in the right place at the right time. So you feel completely at ease the way your work is progressing. I think circumstances are almost going to be out of your control because things will take off by themselves and get better by themselves. I don't even think you need to do very much once the full moon occurs on the second and things will just kind of take on a life of their own and your working life is going to improve, improve, improve. At the same time, these first two weeks of June, Saturn is trining Venus. And again, that causes a real love for your work, a real foundation, a real solidity, and a desire to stay where you are. I don't think you're going to want to go anywhere to even think about changing your jobs to um, go on a holiday at the moment. I think you're pretty happy going to work and really excelling in that field. Now, 
Mercury comes out of retrograde on the 12th of June. And that's interesting because it's very happy in the sign it's in, which is Gemini. Mercury rules Gemini, so communication really starts to flow very easily. Um, and really what I feel is that this starts to balance out that kind of split you've had between work and family. And I think work continues to be good, but family doesn't seem to be so difficult and communication doesn't seem to be so stifled. And it's like you don't need to use work as a safe haven anymore. I think it becomes much more easy. And not only that, it's, it's not just, you know, Mercury retrograde is associated with uh, communication becoming much more challenging. And usually when it ends, it's just things get back to normal. But this time it's almost like the floodgates breaking open because it is in such a good placement. It's right at the very bottom of your chart. It represents your roots. It represents how you feel within yourself, where you come from, what it is you're saying. So you're going to be speaking your truth. And you're going to be speaking what's really important to you and what you really feel without compromising. So I don't think you're going to be particularly concerned with what other people think. I don't think you're going to be particularly particularly tactful. I think you're just going to be, this is my truth. I'm going to say it. If you like it, great. If you don't like it, whatever. Uh, so you're very much black and white and very kind of forceful and very dry about all of this this month. And that's, that's good for you because you can tend to um, go into the water side of things a little bit too much and let your emotions influence your thoughts and your ideas. And this month, I think specifically around the middle of the month, it's going to be about your ideas and what you care about and what you feel to be right. <clears throat> Okay, so, um, yeah, Mercury is going to be in Gemini all month, so that's an ongoing theme that continues. And the outer planets are doing things as well. So the outer planets don't often make these reports because they move very, very slowly. So Pluto is the um, planet in the solar system that's furthest away, and it moves very, very slowly. So it can stay in one house for as long as five years. So the aspects it makes are going to be more generational. They're going to impact people as a whole. Okay, But there's one interesting thing that's happening this month. Um, and Pluto is the planet of rebirth and regeneration. In, in mythology, it was the underworld. And that has been in a square aspect with Uranus for the last three years, since March 2012. Uranus is the planet of rebellion and energy and electricity and miracles that you can't see coming. Now, the square creates tension between them. And the way that's manifested itself for you, specifically Pisces, is that Pluto has been in your 11th house of relationships and hopes and dreams. And Uranus has been in your second house of money and finances. And there may have been a question for you, a friction around the, the, the theme of why haven't I achieved financially what I've wanted to achieve? Why, why don't I have... The, the, the business connections in my life, why don't I have the Jaguar in the driveway? Why don't I have the success that some of my friends have had? And that's a real, um, that can be a real habit and a pattern. You know, I read today that um, envy is ignorance and imitation is suicide. That's a Ralph, Ralph Waldo Emerson quote. And that really makes sense because if you envy someone, you are being ignorant because you don't know what's going on for them. You're comparing your insights, how you feel about yourself, with someone's outside, what's going on for them in the real world. And imitation is suicide because you're literally killing yourself if you're not being yourself. If you're saying, I'm not good enough, I'm going to take the way they do it, I'm going to map that onto myself and do it, where are you? You've taken your own personality and left it. So that has been a theme for you, and that comes to an end on the 13th of June. Now, I really feel that with the success and the stability that you've got at work, you're coming out of that. I think part of that feeling would have driven you forward to achieve more, to work harder, to succeed more, to be more abundant in terms of your financial life. But the angst around it 
now leaves. You don't need to compare yourself to other people. You don't need to feel less than if you don't have enough money, regardless of whether you're successful or not. I mean, I, I see that it just so happens that your career now does take off, but even if it doesn't or if it didn't, that feeling of, I've got to have, you know, that grasping for more, that really leaves you when these two come out of their square aspect on the 13th of June. The other outer planet that's been kind of at work here is Saturn. And Saturn moved into Sagittarius in December 2014. It too is a very slow moving planet and it stays there until December 2017. The only time it changes is now over the summer between um, the 15th of June and the 18th of December, September when it retrogrades into Scorpio. And Saturn is the planet of restriction and structure. And when it retrogrades into Scorpio, your feelings become more structured and you become more limited in terms of your emotions. You don't unearth the hidden depths that you usually would. Okay, So that's going to be quite beneficial to you, really, in terms of your work, because you're not going to um, doubt yourself or really look at what your real potential motives are or why am I doing this? What's really behind this? Da, da, da. And you do tend to question yourself at times and you do kind of mull things over and that doesn't really um, bother you so much over the summer and you become much more practical, specifically in the area of work. So these outer planets do really have an effect on you um, specifically over this summer. And the next thing that really comes in then on the 16th of June is the new moon that happens in Gemini. A new moon is when the moon is completely black and you can think of it like a drain pipe in a bathtub. It just pulls things into it, okay? And the new moon is similar. It happens in Gemini in your, in your fourth house. So what it's doing is it's drawing information in about you, about family, about the way you're going to manage your family in future, what you would like to happen with your family life. Do you want your own family? Do you want children? Do you want to maintain good relationships with your family? Do you want to get married? Do you want to... Whatever it is, there's going to be a tendency for you to Pis Pisces to now look at that and say, what is it that I want to achieve? You know, if you want to have kids, usually people start thinking about it in their 20s and they say, well, yeah, I would actually like to have children at around 30 or something, and then they plan for it. But the first thing is to have that decision. And this new moon is going to be particularly powerful because the moon is here, the sun is here, and Mars is right in the middle. So this black moon is occurring right on top of Mars. It's conjunct with it. And when something's conjunct, it blends its energy. And Mars, remember, is the soldier. It's the archetypal male energy. It's what do I want? What am I going to do? So you're gathering all of this energy, preparing for the future. Mars is sitting in the middle of that saying, what do I want this energy for? And it's like boosting Mars. It's like creating the Incredible Hulk of astrology. And it's saying, what am I going to do with my family in future? So I really expect, Pisces, that around the 16th of June, around this new moon period, you're going to get really clear insights and ideas around what your future family life is going to look like. It's worth listening to. Um, it's worth putting into practice. It's worth putting into place. These things come around, and when they come around, it's important to make use of them. Now, Jupiter is also conjunct with Venus from the 17th of June through until the 14th of August. Jupiter, again, the lucky planet of good fortune, Venus, the goddess of love. When they come together, they mold their energy. So what do you love? What do you feel lucky at? And the good news is it's in the sector of work, and it also trines Uranus in the second house of money. So really, your focus on work, your enjoyment of work, your love for work, and all of the things that you're doing there really results in some unexpected benefits in your finances. But that's just a side effect. I mean, no one's going to turn that away. But the real benefit is that you're so in love with what you do at work. And there are so many um, 
quincux is going on at the moment, which I usually call the, the finger of God. It means there's some sort of karmic purpose at play. And what's happening is that your work and your love for work transforms the way you feel about yourself. It rejuvenates your enthusiasm for the future. You do have hopes and dreams that you can achieve. It gives you a new sense of purpose, new life. It helps you communicate and it balances out the structure between your desire for family and your desire to succeed at work. And because you are succeeding at work, you can now take that off and say, right, I've done that. I've got stability. What kind of family do I want? So it's all kind of clicking together and making sense and coming together for you, Pisces. And really, you're on your path. And you'll start to feel that around the 20th very strongly. Now, finally, Mars moves into moves out of Gemini in the 4th house and moves into Cancer in your 5th house. And this is interesting because um, Cancer and Mars don't really go together that well. Mars doesn't really like being in a water sign. But you aren't going to be particularly affected by this in a negative way because you as a water sign can handle feelings of dis discomfort quite easily. I think you're used to that, certainly. And Mars actually affects you quite positively because it's in conjunction with the Sun in your fifth house. And what it does is it gives you a huge emotional opening in terms of romantic understanding. So, and also not so much in a fun way, but you become hugely compassionate at the end of June. And you really, the emotional intelligence is just through the roof. You really understand what people are going through. You really have an ability to help them and lead them through it. And you have a real interest in other people's feelings. That's the most important thing, that you care about what other people are experiencing. So at the end of the month, please reach out and help someone who may be struggling. You have a real connection between the head and the heart and you can help someone who may not be as lucid during this period as you are so you're really a blessing at the end of the month for someone else so Pisces that said I hope you found that useful if you've got any uh, questions for me please get in touch via my website it's gregoryscott.com if you'd like a private reading with me you can also order that on the website gregoryscott.com just click on the readings tab and you'll see the types of readings that I offer um, if you want to email me, you can, readings at gregoryscott.co.uk, and please remember to subscribe to the channel. Have a glorious June, and I'll speak to you soon.